You're going to be famous on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs>
pre-Columbian times was the main temple of Cusco, the capital city of the Incas. So this convent monastery was built on top of the main temple of Cusco, which of course we've seen many places, probably starting in Cholula, outside Puebla in Mexico, where the Spanish built a Catholic church on top of the biggest pyramid in the world by volume. They just stuck it right on top. Behind you is something that you can't get on camera. That's true. So there are some paintings and canvases that they do not allow you to film as well as some ceilings for whatever reason. But Probably to protect the paint. I don't know how video camera affects paint. Maybe people have their flash on without knowing it. So there are all kinds of these rooms. They're each dedicated to a different individual or thing. This one here is called the lightning chamber. You'll notice that this wall along the street side is straight up and down but all the other walls are at an angle, and this was a predominant feature of Inca construction. Two worlds collide here. In 1100, the Incans built Coricancha, which was the largest temple in Cusco, but then the Spaniards came and conquered the Incans, and they ended up building this convent, the Convento de Santo Domingo, on the site of Coricancha, but some of it is still here. Behind me, you can see some of the original Incan stonework of Coricancha. And then to my other side is the courtyard of the convent. So it's a really bizarre place to be. We've learned some really interesting things. When the Spanish arrived, a lot of this was covered in plates of gold, thick plates of gold, four and a half pounds each. And the Spanish took all that. They also took idols and turquoise and emeralds that were here from the Incans and they brought it back to Spain and then much of it was melted down. And once the Spaniards came and looted it, then they built a monastery uh, to Santo Domingo, which is where we're at now. This diorama essentially shows what it used to look like when the Incans were just here before the courtyard. Brittany's pointing up to a bunch of paintings there on the left that we're not allowed to show on camera. They're Spanish scenes, so they're like Spanish friars doing their work, them with the natives and Raw, raw Spanish is basically what they are. This wall that you see here on the exterior of the monastery is the original Incan wall, and then you can see the Spanish wall there. And then continuing on on the far side, there's more of the Incan wall. So this gives you a perspective of how they built the monastery right on top of the Incan ruins. We are standing in Plaza de Armas in Cusco, Peru. This is the central plaza in Cusco today. And back when the Incans had their center of their entire civilization here in Cusco, this area is where they had their major religious ceremonies. What is this plaza today was two times larger in the times of the Incans. Behind me, there's a statue of a man who was a hero of Peruvian independence. He actually lost his life in this plaza fighting against the Spanish, and he's remembered today with this statue. There are two main churches in Plaza de Armas. One is behind me, it's a Basilica de la Campaña, and then to my side is the Cathedral of Cusco that was built using Incan stones from one of their temples that was destroyed. We are halfway through our three weeks in Cusco. We've done a little bit of exploring. We've gone to the monastery so far, but we still have a lot to see. And today we are heading to the main cathedral on Plaza de Armas. And there are a couple other museums that it's one big ticket that you can buy. So we are headed out right now. Eric and I are in agreement that this cathedral in Cusco is the most impressive cathedral we've seen in Latin America. It was huge and between all the gold and silver work and the paintings were incredible. The largest paintings that we've seen. It was just mind blowing. Unfortunately, no photos or film are allowed inside of the cathedral. We saw several people taking footage, but we wanted to follow the rules. So unfortunately, no footage from us. We're gonna go grab an early lunch at a place that I've had my eye on since before we got here. And then we're going to continue exploring because the ticket that we bought for the cathedral actually gets us entry into three places. So we're gonna go get some food and then go to the next place. We are on our way to the Archbishop's Palace. We already have access through our cathedral ticket. In addition to the 
actual architecture of this archbishop's palace, there are, is a ton of artwork, a ton of painting from what's called the Cusco School, which was a specific style of art and of painting that started in the 1600s. And so it's been really interesting to go through the galleries to see the progression of the paintings over time and the style. It changed after Peruvian independence. The paintings changed, they became more somber. And so it was just really interesting to walk through and see the different artwork. And it's raining now, which it's raining season here in Cusco. It's been raining almost every day. So we're gonna go walk through the rain to our next destination. Brittany has had her eye on the spot that she's been wanting to take Caspian to. It's kind of been a little secret surprise. Hopefully it's open. I don't want to see Caspian be disappointed. It says, Peru's first and only cat cafe. I heard about cat cafes in my podcast, but I thought they weren't real. But when I found out there actually was one, I'm really happy. This is a baby kitty. Two out of three of us are major cat lovers in our family. Caspian is in his element. All the cats are running around playing with different things. And we've never been to a cat cafe before, so this is fun. It's been a full day. We are leaving the cat cafe and heading home. We are headed out to Curicancha, which is the most important Incan site in the whole civilization. For this being the most important Inca site, there really isn't hardly anything left of what used to be here. And what we learned is that the stones from Curicancha were used to build the convent behind us that we've already toured. So they just have little stones like littered over this lawn. And other than that, there's not too much left. They do have a lot of really cool archaeological finds in the museum, textiles and ceramics and idols and that sort of thing. But they weren't necessarily from Curicancha. They're just showing the Incan and the pre-Incan culture. It's only mid-morning and we still have some more energy. So we are going to hit the last site on our integrated ticket that we bought for the cathedral. So we went to the cathedral, the Archbishop's Palace, and we have one more church that we can visit on these tickets. So we're gonna head there now. We were walking to the church when we stumbled by this art museum that's also part of our tourist ticket. So we're gonna go here instead. day of exploration, had a good meal, and now we're going to go back to the Airbnb and rest for the rest of the day. The roads here are narrow. We are going down from the San Blas neighborhood back towards our Airbnb. It's been a great day. Like Brittany said, we're just going to go get some rest and uh, call it a day, I think. We came in just in time. It is hailing out there and it is a massive hailstorm. You can see the hail bouncing off the roof. Dauntless is parked right there. And we are hoping that the solar panels that we just put on are going to survive this hailstorm. What we wandered into accidentally is this association of picanterias and they're having their third annual festival. What a picanteria is, is like a local lunchtime restaurant here in Peru. For those of you who have been to Costa Rica, it's kind of like a soda in Costa Rica. Anyway, it's really fun to see the food and everyone hanging out on a Sunday afternoon. This is Mercado San Pedro. This is a place that is very famous here in Cusco. And we're just gonna take a quick look around. And as you can see, it's pretty massive. There are a ton of local juice places and eateries. I'm gonna get some coffee. Will that make everything right with the world? It's just nice to support local. I don't know if I'll like it, but if I don't try it, I won't know. Inside the San Pedro Market at the very back is a section just full of different restaurants, local vendors, and they have sections for everything. So a food section, a ceviche section. Breakfast, potatoes, arroz con pollo. Everything. everything. 
We are leaving Mercado San Pedro with some coffee and some cheese. It's been really cool to see all the different souvenirs and the food and all the people eating their Sunday lunch. What a cool place. I'm totally overstimulated right now. We're on our way to the most well-known ruin site in the Cusco area. It's called Saxoemon, pronunciation pending. And it is an Incan ruin site up on the hill that I believe they used for military defense. But don't quote me on that. We really don't know anything about it yet. We're gonna go find out. We are climbing up towards the ruins of Saxoemon. We are arriving in Saxoemon. We are arriving at Sakskwai Woman. I don't think I said it right. Sak? Sak? How do you say Sakskwai Woman. Sakskwai Woman. I can't pronounce that thing to save my life. But it was a fun taxi ride. We're here at Sak. I still can't say it. Sakskwai Woman. Saks. Saksaiwaman. What she said. That's that's where we are right now. Caspian, how do you say it? Saksaiwaman. You're the only one in our family that can say it. Kids rock. Entrance to Saksaiwaman. Saksaiwaman. That place. I can never pronounce the name of this place. It's What is it called, Caspian? Saksaiwaman. There you go. Well, this is our guide, Romulo. Don Romulo, he is going to take us around Saksaiwaman, and we are going to have a blast, and we're going to take you with us. You can use a little hawk on the rock. There's a hawk right there on the rock. Our family is a local bird. It's a bird of prey. Hello, good morning. We are in Saksaiwaman, one of the very famous Inca temples in Wales in the 15th century. This was a very important astronomical temple. They watched the stars and constellations in order to to get good crops for all this land. We are going to visit the caves, the tunnels, the temples, the plazas in where they would carry out ceremonies, rituals. The main temple that is in the other side, in the upper parts, in where the Incas celebrate uh, diverse activities in there. Appreciate it. It's okay, it's okay. You're gonna be famous on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so look at a nice national park. Wow. Governments protect all this area with the money that you pay for the entrance. We have a bad year with the pandemia, but now we are recovering our tourists. No? So it's a good uh, occasion to say you can come to Peru because now it's getting better, peaceful, and the political situation is getting better. Mm -hmm. Peru, we have something like 11 national parks. You know? All of them are protected by Peruvian government, of course, and the biggest one is the jungle, you know, the lungs, because thanks to the jungle, we can breathe more freely. So in that way, the biggest uh, national park that we have in Peru is the jungle with two millions of hectares. The name is Manu. So I invite you to visit Manu, which is very nice. There's a tunnel that he's been telling us about in there. Wow, this is so cool. And the only reason you can see anything is because I have a light on my Garmin watch. All right, now just so you guys can see, I'm going to turn off my light for a second. That's what you get to see. Now I'm going to turn my light back on so that we can see where we're going. Come on, baby. Let's go. And there's our guy behind us coming in. Hello, 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 how are you? We are the adventure. <laughs> yes. How? Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Yeah. How long is this? Oh, I see the end, baby. I see the end. Me too. Oh, it was so cool. Hi, say hello. Oh, hello. Hello. I haven't done anything like this. So cool. So we came out of the tunnel into this large plaza and it's still being excavated, but there's a lot of evidence of water reservoirs, of holding water, and this used to be underwater is what's believed by archaeologists. There's natural tunnels all around us. There's even a myth that one of them leads down to the Santo Domingo Cathedral in the center of Cusco. Behind this line here are these mounds. They call it the cemetery. And that is because they found a lot of Incan blocks here. And recently, archaeologists have found some mummies that they believe may be tied to the Incan royal families that were buried here. This here was an amphitheater, but from the stones, we know that it had a religious purpose. And you can see at least one niche over there where they would put maybe a mummy or an offering and use this for their religious services. Which makes sense because we're right next to the cemetery. This is a man-made niche. It was chiseled out here and then used with amethyst to make it more smooth. And we think maybe it was used to put bronze on to reflect light, or it was used for putting religious objects on there. And that's what this is here. It's a staircase. 
But it's upside down. <laughs> so Romulo said that this rock was turned upside down by the Spanish as they were looking for gold. Talk about leaving no stone unturned, huh? <laughs> right, exactly. These are ancient slides. Caspian wants to do the slide. Brittany and I are not entirely sure how we feel about it, but he wants to give it a shot. So we'll see what this looks like. All right, Caspian, let's see what you got, buddy. Make it nice and slow, baby. I'll try it from here now. Yes, don't we do hard, don't we do hard. <laughs> Good job, Caspian. What's Caspian doing now? He needs to do another one. Ready? Yeah, do it. I just did a big slide over there, and I just did this one right here. I had to crawl the slippery rocks all the way up, and then I slid down. But the thing is, there's so many bumps, so I went zigzagging down it. This is our first look at Saksai Waman Temple, and we just learned that Saksai Waman means puma head. You can see how extensive it is. There are the temple walls, and down below is Cusco. Romulo is telling us that the walls that we see in front of us are retaining walls because the temples were actually above it. Behind us was the temple on the hill, but below it is this large plaza that was used for religious ceremonies, but also it was the place where we believe that the Incan boys became men, and they had some kind of ceremony. It was like a competition to prove their entry into manhood. And after they succeeded in the ceremony they were given the earrings which ended up making their ears longer and designated them as the upper classes. This is a pretty fantastic place. We're going to head down there now and then head up to the other side and see the ruins and foundations of the temples. All right this is not going to be my favorite part but we got to do it. Caspian and Brittany had to help me down each and every one of these steps because my knees are shot but it was really cool to come down here and now we are in the grassy plaza of the temple area. This is the wall that we see just 50%, like already we mentioned, were destroyed by the Spaniards, because here was carried out battles, Spaniards against Incas in 1533, when the Incas rise up against the Spaniards. These are the original Incan walls, and you can see that each stone was precisely cut. Romulo was explaining to us that they used a string to measure the space where they needed the stones. And then once they had that measurement, they would take them to the stone quarries and they would bring them over here by hand. They didn't use animals. They used cylindrical stones to roll them over here and ramps to push them up. They would line the interior with clay and then they would slide the stones in. The clay would eventually disappear and the stones would completely settle. And now you can't even pass a piece of paper in between these stones. And although Cusco has had many earthquakes in this area and all of the colonial buildings, the cathedral and other significant buildings downtown have collapsed, all of these have remained completely intact. The Incans were marvels when it came to engineering. Pretty incredible to see this in person. This stone behind me is 120 tons and there were no animals used in the construction of this. It was all human labor. Go stand in front of it so they can get a, an idea of how tall it is. <laughs> it's massive. Look at the preciseness of this and do not miss this because it is absolutely incredible. The engineering marvel that the Incans were able to perform here. I've been saying you can't pass a piece of paper through these walls, but remember I told you about the major earthquakes? This happened here in 1950. And while much of Cusco was destroyed, this is all that happened to the Incan walls. This small sliver of space. It's a testimony to their engineering and ability. Pretty incredible. We are now on top of where the temples were. So this is the foundation of the temples. And as we look around, the temples overlooked what is now Cusco City, but they got to see it as it was back then with Curicancha, which we've already shown you. Behind me is where the temple to the sun was. It was 12 feet high and there was a spring right in the middle of it and other reservoirs of water, as well as concentric circles going out. This has been an amazing site to really dig deep into and explore. Our guide was amazing. We learned so much. 
really glad that we took the drive up to the hill to explore this place this morning. Say goodbye to Saksai Waman. I will wait for you the next year. <laughs> Romolo, you've been fantastic. Thank you so much. You are welcome. And this is why you don't want to have a massive vehicle driving through these colonial streets. This is a two lane road. It's all cobblestone, super steep, heading down into the city of Cusco. We were going to another restaurant for lunch. But because of the one-way streets, the taxi driver had to drop us off before the restaurant. We accidentally stumbled on the restaurant where we're at right now. It's called Uchu Steakhouse. Eric loves a good steak. He's on keto, so steak is good for him. This tableside guacamole is unbelievable. So we may be back. What color is like not made of? The classic is like a tree, like a green. Yes, yeah. no classic. Azules. Anaranjados. We're back up on the mountain by Sacsayhuaman and we are at another set of ruins called Kinko. This is not as large and so we don't expect to be here as long but it's a beautiful day. There's lots of trees around us which I love and we're gonna head in. We understand Kinko to be a mausoleum for one of the Incan kings, Yupanqui Pachacuti. And so we are heading into where his body used to be. What's really interesting about the Incan ruins that have lasted for these hundreds of years while most of the Spanish buildings have been destroyed is that the walls are still here, but they just use thatch for their roofs. And so all the roofs are gone. And especially in Cancha, which was built so well and is still there, that magnificent building, the center of the Incan civilization, just had a thatch roof. Wow, look at this. Do you think this is the mausoleum portion? I do. Makes sense. All carved out. And this is one of the niches that they talked about. Big oh. one. Where they would put the idols. Mm -hmm. So this path is above the mausoleum. Look at that. There's mud puddles, so watch out. It rained <laughs> last night. Mommy, this is where we saw the people. Yep, we're just above where the Incan king's body was laid to rest. Oh, this is really narrow. I'm at the exit. All right. We came up and around to these foundational ruins. And then this is back at the entrance where we started. So Caspian and I are headed back this way where we left Aaron. Remember we said this wasn't a very large site. We're already heading for the exit. When we were at Saksai Waman, the guide told us that these trees were all brought here by the Spanish. None of these are native to Peru. Brittany was mentioning that I don't think we've ever been in a grove of trees in Peru. Isn't that crazy? We're getting ready to leave Cusco and today I have got to go get Dauntless and take him to a tire shop so that we can rotate the tires. It's a lot easier than having to jack him up myself. Also, it only costs 20 souls. So I've left the Airbnb this morning and I'm heading to pick up Dauntless now. Kept Dauntless parked right here, about a half block away from where we've been. Just been sitting here under the watchful eye of the security folks that are here. So this is pretty unbelievable. They don't have a torque wrench here. I didn't bring a torque wrench, which would go up to 130 foot pounds on the Gladiator because of size and weight and infrequency of use, just figuring that they would have them. But the guy tells me that really nobody here in Peru has them, nobody uses them. I don't know if it's just me, but it makes me a little nervous. We are leaving with a lot more than we came with. I am a little overwhelmed. Look at this. I have three different types of peanut butter. Look at that. That's crazy. Who does that? It always feels good to be back going to Dauntless. We're going to pick him up right now, drive him into that alleyway. We'll get him all loaded up. The rain started a little bit. It's holding off, so I'm hoping I can get this all done before that happens. We've made it to the alleyway. There's our hostess, Janeth, that's right there. We're packing up our final stuff and we will be on our way momentarily. Part of coming to Cusco, it's the launching point for Machu Picchu. And if you drive all the way down to Peru, you've got to go to Machu Picchu. So I'm here with Randy. Seemed like a straight shooter, so I told him, hey, I'm gonna talk to Brittany about it. If she's cool with it, I'll bring her back. I brought Brittany back here. She liked what she saw. 
and said, go ahead and book the ticket. So Caspian and her already took off. I'm booking the tickets with Randy. We're going to Machu Picchu. In our next video, we are going to take you to one of the seven wonders of the world, Machu Picchu. This video will be mind blowing. So if you haven't yet, this is your reminder to subscribe to our channel now and hit the bell notification icon so you get notified when the next video goes up. And if you really enjoy our videos, we invite you to go behind the scenes with us on our Patreon to really get to know us. Patreon is where we get real and raw and you get regular, unfiltered, live video and see parts of this journey that nobody else gets to see. The link for our Patreon is in the description of this video and we'd appreciate it if you'd take a look. We hope you enjoyed this section of the journey around the world and we thank you for being part of it. Stay tuned for the outtakes and until next time, we will see you in the next video.